Uh, for those of you that don't know me, um, all, that all those problems with universe end of life VME chips, yeah, it's probably my fault. Uh, I was one of the original uh, architects behind, uh, behind that technology, working with Jerry and, and Ray and Jing. In fact, Chow Pham and I, I think, co-chaired the 2 ESST spec like 20 years ago, whenever that was. So um, now what am I doing? I'm, I'm hanging out with these Rapid.io characters, and I'm running the rapidio.org community. I've been doing that for about a year. And I think many of you probably know about Rapid.io, so just a quick show of hands. Who here has heard of Rapid.io before? So this, is, this part's easy. Who here has shipped products with Rapid.io in them? That's good. Who here knows that there are more 10 gigabit per second Rapid.io ports in the world than there are 10 gigabit per second Ethernet ports in the world? And it's not even close. OK? And why is that? It's been used heavily in wireless infrastructure. Not this market space for sure, but if you take out your 4G LTE phone and call me on my 4G LTE phone, that call somewhere is going through a cellular uh, base station nearby on a Butte Mountain someplace nearby, and that call is being connected through a rapid IO fabric in those boxes. It's 100% market penetration. There is significant investment that continues in rapid IO, and that's what I'll talk about. And I know you've already heard from Patrick a little earlier in terms of the uh, the Air Force Research Lab and NGSIS. I've got some slides on that as well. I'm not a very formal guy. Um, please interrupt. Call, that's a load of crap, Rick. Oh, sorry. And, and then, uh, you know, make this as interactive as, as we can. So I'll talk a little bit about Rapid.io. I've got a bunch of slides here that I'm going to skip over, but I wanted them to be in the handouts that you guys get or are able to download. Uh, so I'll jump around in the presentation a little bit. Give you a, a quick snapshot on where the technology is today. Some of the investment that's happened over the last 14 to, to uh, 18 months uh, in, in the space. And where Rapid.io is showing up that you might not otherwise expect to see it. Actually, I should have asked you this too. How many here think that, oh yeah, Rapid.io, that's that thing that used to be used in wireless? Oh good, nobody thinks that. That's good. <laughs> Nobody's going to admit it. This isn't uh, working here, Jer. Okay, we'll just keep going anyway. So, you know, it's been around for a good long time, more than uh, tw 10 years of market deployment. Like I said before, 100% market penetration, wireless infrastructure. You know, if you're Ericsson, Nokia, um, Huawei, ZTE, any of those guys who make wireless space stations, you use Rapid.io at the base of that tower. Uh, a bunch of spec evolutions over the last uh, year or so. Uh, the 10 gig spec was released a little over a year ago, and then 3.1 with extensions for uh, NGSIS was released just this past summer. We're working on a 25 gig extension now. Um, and you know, when we talk about latency through a fabric, this is end-to-end -end latency of 100 nanoseconds, not just in a switch. There's no protocol termination overhead at, at either end from a CPU standpoint, and inherently scales to hundreds of thousands of nodes. Okay, so I mentioned this a little bit already. The, uh, like I said, the spec, the 3.1 spec was released just this past summer, and that has specific extensions for the space community and being able to um, um, uh, distribute clocks through the fabric effectively and a number of other uh, um, fault tolerant and fail safe extensions to allow for or a safe degradation of a port and failover, switch, switch over of a, of a failed port. We've got a very strong ecosystem and I think most of you might be aware of that. In fact, many of the companies that are here sponsoring this event are also Rapid.io uh, members. So it's very healthy. Major CPU and NPU uh, support, DSP, FPGA, both the Xilinx and, and uh, Altera guys support the, the technology. Uh, and probably somewhere in the neighborhood of a billion dollars worth of commercial uh, business at the silicon level. So it's, it's a very, very healthy piece of technology. Here's a, uh, a view of the ecosystem, sort of the who's who in the zoo. Uh, and of note here, over the last uh, year, uh, a couple of major companies have joined to participate in, in that ARM and AMD are, are now part of the community as well. And we'll talk about uh, why, what they're doing here in just a second. In fact, I think on the next slide. So one of the, one of the things that ARM's quite interested in 
is uh, building out a server infrastructure on 64-bit ARM processors. And a high-speed uh, interface for that processor, an open high-speed interface for that processor architecture that can scale coherently across uh, a unified fabric is of great interest. And that's the, we have a very active task group uh, right now that's doing that work uh, with uh, several uh, key vendors participating, and that's on the next slide here. So AMD and ARM, Cavium, Freescale, IDT, uh, Xilinx, Texas Instruments, Marvell, Mercury, Mobavell, and Prism, in no particular order. Uh, quite a, quite a, and the, the, that interesting logo under the Cavium logo, that's the Indian Institute of Technology in Madras. Uh, so there's some very interesting investment around the world going on in looking at how to use rapid I.O. in 64-bit uh, in, in ARM devices. I'm going to talk a little bit about this platform because it's, it's quite interesting and leveraged technology that you guys all have made investments in, um, in terms of micro TCA and AMCs. So this is a, a one-use server platform to, to try to help guys in the data center understand something other than an IA-based architecture uh, and, and, and look at different technologies that came from different parts of the, uh, of the ecosystem. What it really is is a micro TCA turned on its micro TCA blade, or sorry, uh, ATCA motherboard uh, acting as, as the baseboard in this 1U server with four AMC slots. Um, all crammed into a 1U box with the fans and, and uh, power supply on the side and the, uh, the disks in the front so that we could, so the Rapid.io community vendors could rat, walk into a data center environment and not have the guy scream and say, get that telecom looking shit out of my lab, right? It's a 1U box. They put it in their 19-inch rack. They're quite happy. They just don't know that the underlying guts um, are, uh, are based on AMC and ETCA form factor. And it's opened up the doors to quite a bit of playing. So this is a, the you know, sort of 3D drawing view of the box. You can see the ATCA blade in there and, and, uh, and then four EMC sticking out the side. It's not meant to be, be a serviceable ATCA or, or, uh, or AMC uh, venue, but it, it's allowed people to bring existing technology uh, into this environment and, and show uh, some of the data center architectures what can be done, uh, data center architects what could be done. So ProDrive has a couple of cool blades here uh, with TI Keystone 2s, uh, some Freescale uh, devices as well. Uh, Concurrent Technologies, who is one of the sponsors here today, uh, a cool i7 quad-core device, and there's some interesting uh, benchmarking uh, that's been done using that platform, and I'll show you into that in a little bit. Um, and Com Agility with a very nice uh, uh, radio. A little bit more uh, of some of the demo and capability platforms that we put together. So the ARM plus DSP high performance computing over Rapid.io will show you a, a very significant commercial example of that in a little bit. And this Hadoop cluster running on i7s uh, over Rapid.io outperforms the exact same software drop down on a quad set of i7s that are clustered on Ethernet drop down on a quad set of i7s that are clustered on rapid IO, and the performance from a throughput standpoint and a power standpoint benefits are dramatic. And I invite you to take a closer look at that. And now Patrick went through some of this earlier this morning. I wasn't here to see what he, what he did, but I'll, I'll touch on it really quick. Uh, so the NGSIS team in 2012 selected rapid IO as a protocol for next generation systems. And within the Rapid.io community, we had a task group working on Part S to develop the extensions um, and, and the, uh, the features that, that were required by that group, with most of the focus being on more robustness, uh, additional robustness and fault tolerant features. And many of these features actually um, have been adopted into the broader spec because they've been seen to be quite useful beyond the military and, and, uh, and space applications uh, that Patrick and team were leading us through. So here's a a roster list, many of the members here are members here as well, but a roster list of the companies that participated o over the course of the evolution of that spec. And it drops down into V to 78, right? That's what space VPX is, you guys probably all know, know that. But it's based on the open VPX V to 65 work and would be very, very cool, I think, to, uh, uh, 
to see how this fits into the, the previous uh, effort. So, the, I mean, you guys have seen this stuff before, but the backplane uh, set up for Space VPX, whoop, or Space VPS, if anybody wants to pick that up, uh, um, is, is quite familiar, I think, to this crowd. So some of the enhancements that we made in 3.1, specifically to meet some of these requirements, is a graceful degradation from uh, four by two and by one ports to, to 2x operation on, on, the, on the remaining lanes two and three, uh, asymmetric links, uh, the, the error management capability in, in the part, at, part eight uh, section of the Rapadio spec, making that mandatory. The multicast extensions and the time uh, synchronization are, are very good uh, capabilities to have added to the spec. And some performance diagnostics with pseudorandom uh, bitstream generation and uh, a deeper error, error recovery log have, have been uh, additions that, that were, have been made as well. So this was all voted on and ratified uh, this past summer and released in August, I think it was. Is that right, Patrick? Yeah. Okay, so we talked about HP um, high performance computing systems a little bit uh, uh, earlier with clustering ARM processors and TI DSPs over Rapid.io. So this uh, is an HP Moonshot uh, platform, uh, a commercial grade server that HP has. You might have heard of the Moonshot platform. It's, it's pretty agnostic in terms of what cards go into it. Uh, HP calls it an open system. It's a HP open system. <laughs> uh, I love HP to death if there's anybody in the room. Um, but uh, these, are, these are custom cartridges uh, developed to an HP spec that there's Intel-based cartridges, there's ARM-based cartridges. This particular cartridge, the ProLiant M800, has four Keystone IIs on it. And that gives you, uh, when you populate a whole chassis, 760 RMA15 cores and 1,440 C66X DSPs. And that whole infrastructure is all clustered over a 2D Rapid.io Taurus. It's pretty cool stuff, and the density and horsepower that you get out of this is, is actually quite amazing. And the first sort of public use of this platform is by PayPal. Um, they use this in their analytics uh, environment to um, close the door on fraudulent transactions. Uh, as, you, as you can appreciate, the longer you leave the door open, the more money sneaks out the door. So a high performance, low latency solution that can uh, compute the, the data that they need to compute um, is, is quite interesting to them. This is all running Linux, a very familiar interface, and uh, is really quite interesting. And part of the reason that uh, the ARM and AMD uh, folks of the world have come to the table to participate. Some more high performance work going on at IDT. They've created a high performance analytics and computing lab um, based on a lot of the technology that we saw earlier with that 1U uh, pizza box um, and, and the cards from ProDrive and concurrent technology. I'll skip past this one and show you yeah, so one of the things that was pretty cool was during the Argentina and Germany World Cup, uh, working with Orange Telecom uh, using this platform. So here's, here's part of the cool stuff, right? This, maybe now in my lifetime, we've been talking about datacom and telecom convergence for a heck of a long time, like forever. When I was in school, I think people started talking about that, but now it's kind of starting to happen. You got the data center, and whether this is in a, in a military, uh, environment or in a consumer electronics or in a telecom infrastructure environment. You got a data center in a cloud and you got the acquisition out here someplace. Server co-location is a big deal, right? If I can actually get the compute resource I need right where the data acquisition is happening, why send it to the cloud, right? That backhaul is pretty ugly. Rapid.io, not by design 15 years ago, but Rapid.io by, as it turns out, is an ideal technology to build the server cluster portion of, of your box and the acquisition and um, digital signal processing portion of your box all in one system. So server co-location at the access point of a wireless access network is, is quite interesting. And that's what this was, was partially about. Do some real-time analysis, collecting sentiment of the World Cup 
based on monitoring Twitter, Twitter data and you know, be able to graph some, you can go and look at the details here, being able to graph of what's going on and, and how that was happening in terms of how users felt uh, while, while things were going on in the, uh, in the actual game.